going on? It's Ian Hart here, and welcome to the Cubicle Cure. So this is for you if you're sitting down all day and start to feel your backache. The back pain relief program, the main program, is going to be your best bet, but if you can't leave your seat and you're at work, this is your second best option. Alright, so a few things before we get into the eight exercises that you're going to do seated in your chair. Some of them you're actually going to stand up for, but the important thing is that you're going to warm up before. We need to get your blood flowing, you need to get blood into the muscles so that stretching can help. So what I recommend is that you go walk a flight of stairs for a few minutes. Get your heart rate up a little bit. Start to even feel your body loosen up. That's going to be one of the best things for doing the cubicle cure. And also the next thing is before we do this you have to understand pelvic tilting. And pelvic tilting is how your pelvic is placed while you're sitting. And this is very important as you go from here on out into the future because if you're sitting with a posterior pelvic tilt, meaning it's tilted backwards, that means you're constantly putting stress on the lower back. It's going to have pressure. It's going to reduce the amount of energy, blood flow, oxygen that goes to that area, and you're going to end up with pain. Whereas if you have an anterior pelvic tilt, the spine is now in alignment, and now there's not stress on the discs and the lower back. So what we're going to do is going to help you take that stress off, but at the same time, we want to be conscious of the pelvic tilts. So, just right now while you're sitting, I just want you to tilt your pelvis back and forth so you get conscious of what the difference is. If you already have back pain, when you do the posterior pelvic tilt, a lot of times people will feel more of an issue there. Sometimes just doing this motion will help because you've lacked this motion for maybe years. So, alright, that's the first thing. Now we're going to get into the eight exercises of the cubicle cure and the first one is going to be the hip flexor stretch. So while you're sitting on your chair, this depends on how high your chair is, you might need to sit up or get off a little bit off your chair. You're putting one leg back one leg on the ground, I'm able to actually keep my butt on the chair. If you can't do that, you can also just get off the chair real quick. And now you're going to push your hip forward, keeping your abs tight. And you want to feel stretching your hip flexors for 8 seconds. And then you're going to relax and then repeat. 8 seconds, you can go a little bit further, feel a little bit more of a stretch. And then back up again, we're going to do it one more time. Remember, you're not putting stress downward. It's moving forward, so don't put pressure downward. And again, eight seconds holding and deep breathing. Good. When you breathe, think about oxygen going into the hip. So you're going to switch sides. Again, pushing the hip forward. Deep breath in. So breathing into the hip. And then relax, coming back again. And again, pushing forward, holding for eight seconds. And breathing in again. Again, the pelvis shouldn't be tilted backwards or forward. The abs should be tight and keeping it in, st in a straight position. If you feel any pain on your knee, that means you're putting pressure downward too much or it's in an awkward position. Just, so just move your knee around. And relax. Alright, so now we're going to sit up back in the chair. And we're going to cross one leg over the right leg over the left knee. And you're going to pull your knee into your chest, and then you're going to push it down. And remember, I want you to just relax while you're doing this. If you if you're, feel tension or you're too anxious and uptight, and you're trying to force these stretches, it's actually going to do the opposite of what you want. So just try to relax. Focus on your breathing. This one we're moving back and forth. Feel a good stretch. So you should feel it kind of stretching your glutes when you pull up here and then pushing down and now let's do that a few more times pull up so now right now we're getting synovial fluid activation in the hip this helps bring blood flow and nutrients now we're going to switch sides so we're pulling up pushing down pulling up pushing down and still breathing we're going to do three more reps you loosen up the hips. The hips are directly connected with the back. So many times people will have hip pain connected with back pain or the hips will hurt because of the back. 
There's a lot of muscles that cross both areas and they're all connected. So we want to acti activate the hips. All right. Now, we're going to move on to the next one. It's going to be eight reps on each side. You're going to pull the knee in to the chest and then extend. I have pretty flexible hamstrings. So, if you can't extend this far, that's fine. Just do what you can. Try to extend here, but feel the hamstrings a little bit. So extend, and each time try to get up a little bit higher, pull in, and then extend. Two more. Okay. And now we're going to switch. So pull into the chest, extend. For those of you who have very tight hips, you might feel this one in your hip. Uh, if it's very tight, you might feel a, the hip contract. That's okay, just relax your leg and do less reps. So we don't want to, we don't want to cause any knots. And just go a little bit, a little bit less intense, a little bit lighter until your hips start to loosen up. Okay, last one. All right, so now, this is a, an exercise, but it's also more of a mental thing that has to do with back pain. We're going to call this the ab activator. So this is exercise number four, and what I want you to do is you're going to actually hit yourself in the stomach. This is biofeedback. When you hit yourself in the stomach, it's going to cause you to activate your abs. People who sit down all day start to lose their ab activation. They start to decrease the amount that they use the abs. So, real quick, I want you to cough. So just <coughs> cough. When you cough, I want you to feel your abs. <coughs> You'll feel your abs activate. That's true ab activation. A lot of times people are told, suck your stomach in or suck it in tight. That's the opposite of what we actually want to do. So cough. <coughs> now feel your abs. Now you're going to do 10 reps. You're going to tighten your abs and then hit into the abs. Just, just lightly, just to feel them. So right now this is keeping our spine straight, our abs are tight, and now we're also getting an ab workout. So we're getting back and ab workout. Okay, let's do a few more. Okay, all right. So there you go, ab activation. Now we're gonna do the clam. Clam, you're gonna sit on the end of your chair, and you're gonna open, grab your knees here, you're going to open your legs, feel your glutes activate back here, feel a stretch in your inner thigh, and then you're going to resist with your hands gently, and then close. Okay, we're going to do eight reps of that. That's one, open up, and then close, and each time you're pushing out a little bit further. Three, and still breathe. Four, good, feel a good stretch in the inner thigh. Feel the glutes, five. You should feel a stretch in your hips too. Six. Seven. And last one, feel a good stretch. Eight. And relax. Okay, so now we're gonna move on to exercise number six. This is the standing hip flexor stretch. So this time you're gonna have to step up, put your foot on your chair here. And now you're gonna bring your hips to the chair, and back up again, and then bring your hips to the chair, and I want you to feel a stretch right in your hips, and again, we're going to do this eight reps, that's three, each time try to go a little bit further, four, so some of you who are very tight might not, might not even be able to move to this point before you feel it, that's okay, each time you're going to get better. Let's do three more, and then we're going to switch sides. One, now I'm feeling good, stretch deep. Two, last one, three, good, and now we're going to switch sides. Same thing, eight reps. One, for those of you who haven't been working out, this is actually going to be a good leg exercise as well. Make sure when you go down, you're keeping the weight on your heel. Focus on 
feeling that stretch. And just activating your legs is going to help your back as well. Remember, you have vital nerves in the lower back that come down the legs. Okay, let's do two more good ones. Pushing forward, feel a good stretch. And relax. All right, now we're going to do standing hamstring. You're going to put your leg low depending on how tight your hamstrings are. You might go higher or lower. This is fine for me, and this is where the pelvic tilt comes in. Right now, we don't want our, our back rounded. We want to tilt the pelvis forward, and just tilting the pelvis forward for me, I feel tension on my hamstring. So tilt the pelvis forward, and now you're just going to lean forward. We're going to hold it. We'll breathe in. Eight seconds. And then lean back, and now we're going to repeat another time, two more times. This time we're going to go a little further. Very important that your pelvis stays tilted forward. Good. Last time, eight seconds. As I'm breathing out, I'm pushing forward a little bit more. Breathe in. Push forward a little bit more again. Good. You see how my hamstrings loosened up now? I felt that a lot. Same thing on the other side. Deep breath in. Forward. Again, forward. And relax. Two more sets. Breathe in. Keeping that pelvis tilted. One more set each time. You should feel the stretching help. So you should go further and further. At last one. All right. So that's a good stretch right there. Now we're going to move on to exercise number eight, the chair pull. This is the last one. You're going to sit in your chair. Get a, get a nice position you can grab on the sides or the front. You're pulling up. Remember, the pelvic tilt, you're keeping your back straight. So we don't want to round the back. We don't want to arch it too much. The spine is in alignment. We're going to pull up, push our butt down and our heels down, and activate the abs. Push the butt up, push the heels down, and pull up. And we're focusing on activating these small muscles on the lower back. So think about it. We're going to hold it for eight seconds. Pushing and pulling, and relax. Okay, two more times, same thing. Push and pull, make sure the feet are wide apart, and push the butt down, pull up, tilt the head, make sure the spine is in alignment, and relax. Last one, here we go, on the eight exercise, seated chair pull, pull. Still breathing, consistent breathing, focus on the muscles in the lower back, and relax. Okay, if you didn't feel the muscles in the lower back, that's okay. Sometimes it takes a while for you to connect your mind with those movements. That's part of what we're doing here with the cubicle cure, is reconnecting your body. If you've been sitting for years, and you're causing that to reduce the energy and blood flow in your lower back, then this will help tremendously. So. This is Ian Hart with BackPainReliefForLife.com, The Cubicle Cure. I hope this helps. This is something that you could do every single day, even twice a day if you wanted to. So this will get blood flow, nutrients, and oxygen to your lower back if you have a, a, a job where you're sitting at your desk all day. All right? I hope this helps. I hope your back's feeling better, and now I want you to believe that it's going to get better and you're going to get stronger. All right? Have a great day, and we'll see you on the next side.